We're just coming up to about 162,000 miles on this engine. There's a few things that I've done in the engine bay to prepare for this trip to Morocco. Standard stuff, fuel filter change, air filter change, uh, engine oil change right before we came, just to give the engine the best possible start. Fan belt's new, the radiator is also new as well. We have had a slight leak from the cooling system and I did think it was the radiator. It was quite old. It was pretty good condition, but it was quite old. So we replaced it and it turns out that wasn't what was causing the problem. So we do have a bit of a slight leak, but it's not so much to, to cause much concern. But anyway, we have a new radiator. Of anything, when you're coming out to somewhere like this, where it's ambient temperatures around mid, mid to low 30s during the day, it's good to have a good radiator. Um, because trundling around the UK, you will hardly ever see anything above 25 degrees, really. The 300 TDI, I think, is the best engine for the job. Um, it does have its weaknesses, as does the T5 and the 200 TDI. But to be honest, from my point of view, the better the devil you know. The biggest weakness that the 300 TDI has that's known about, you get some kind of leak in the coolant system. You only need to drop about two liters, and that's two liters out of about 11 liters capacity. Because the water pump is quite high here on the engine, and the same as the thermostat and the temperature gauge sensor, as soon as the water level drops below there, then no coolant is going to be circulated around the engine. And the because the temperature gauge, or the temperature sensor will be out of water, I mean that actually the temperature will go down, it will cool a bit more. So what you have in effect is basically an engine that's not cooling itself and telling you it's getting cooler when really it's just destroying itself. So I fitted a coolant sensor in the cap here. This is just a Range Rover item and it's wired up to one of the lights in the dashboard. So that'll tell me if there's any catastrophic cooling failure. Other than that, I've pretty much replaced every hose, except the bottom hose, um, which seemed to be okay, but every other hose I've replaced the heater hoses as well. Oh, and the expansion bottle. Rumour has it, the black expansion bottles can um, fail around the seam. The fact that it was 17 years old as well, I thought it'd be worth bringing a new one. The great thing with these translucent bottles is the fact that um, you don't have to open the cap to work out what the level is because you can actually see with the blue coolant we've got you can actually see the level on the side there so you don't even have to open the bottle which is quite handy compared to the black ones one other thing i did fit which is kind of just for an interest point of view because i've never known before is an exhaust gas temperature gauge down here i've also fitted a turbo gauge so the turbo tells you how much air you're ramming in how hard you're making the engine work and the exhaust gas temperature is basically the engine's reaction to say, you're telling me I'm working this much, this is how much of a reaction there is from the engine. On a 300 TDI, it's said that it gets around about 700 degrees Celsius, is a bit of a problem area. What we've seen with this vehicle is pretty good. Cruising on the motorway, flat 350 degrees, something like that. The highest we got was about 580 degrees, and that was in the motorway sections of Spain when you're going full th full turbo just up a mountain at motorway speeds but other than that we've, it's been pretty good it hovers yeah between 450 going up modest inclines drops down to 200 when you're just cruising about 30 miles an hour so that's quite interesting and lets you know how the how the engine's reacting to what you're telling it to do so that's the engine bay this is the thing that will get you to cool places and get you home